at the end of the film, nobody really knows what happened as far as the, the facts of the event. If you think after f watching it one time or two times or three times that you figured out what really happened, watch it again. <laughs> right, uh-uh. No, Kurosawa was once asked, uh, you know, if you watch Rashomon enough times, if you watch it carefully enough, can you really figure out what happened? And he just burst into laughter. He said, well, probably the samurai is really dead. That's it. You know, you, you do not know what happened. And it's, it's, it's meant to be that way. You don't know. You can't figure out what really happened. Okay? The problem of truth doesn't get solved. What the, what the woodcutter does solve is the moral problem. What do I do? I have the capacity for good. I have the capacity for evil. I know I'm capable of doing good. I know I'm capable of doing evil. What do I do? I just accept who I am and I step up to the plate and I do the right thing. Okay? In the end, he takes that, you know, w without emphasizing the, the moral dimension, there's no explanation for the ending of the film, okay? And many Western critics have sat back and said, well, what, what is this ending supposed to be? That just looks like it's tacked on for no reason. No, it is absolutely at the core of the moral dimension. I am not perfectly good and I'm not perfectly evil, so what do I do in the present situation? Kurosawa's answer to the question, what do we do in the present situation, muddled as it is, is always the same. If we are capable of caring about each other, there is still hope. There is still a way to go on. When the woodcutter takes the baby and offers to take it home and raise it with his own six kids, poor as he is, he's not suddenly transformed into a saint. He's still the same guy, but the same guy, an imperfect, flawed human being, is capable of doing good, is capable of having compassion is capable of doing the right thing. That is why the priest then bows to him and says, I think you have restored my faith in humanity. Not because the priest now believes that this, that this uh, woodcutter is saintly, but because it's like, you know, actually you don't have to be saintly. You can be a real warts and all human being and nevertheless still be capable of good, still be capable of caring. As long as we're able to care about each other, there is hope for the future. Kurosawa was a big fan of American Westerns, both because of their absolutely simplistic morality. The good guy's wearing white, the bad guy's wearing black. <laughs> the good guy overcomes the bad guy and then rides off into the sunset. You know, the setting sun, the sun setting in the West is a very universal symbol for uh, the journey is over, the day is done, the work is complete. Okay? In uh, Chinese and Japanese Buddhism, they sometimes talk about the Western paradise. Okay? Um, at the end of Rashomon, Kurosawa has flipped that over. The woodcutter walks out, not off into the sunset, walks out into the sunrise, walks toward the sun, into illumination. Because, you know, the day is not over, the sun's not setting, the sun's rising, the, the work's not done, but we are able to go on, we are able to live another day, we are able to continue. We don't have to give up on ourselves or on each other. Very amazing. I, I love the way, I'm sure it's unintentional, but I love the way that that parallels Plato's cave, you know, coming out into the light. I don't have to remain in the darkness. I can actually come out into the light and be illuminated. Um, Kurosawa is um, making this film in the 1950s. It's not that long since World War II was over. Imagine you're a Japanese living uh, in Japan in that time period. What's life like? Your traditional society is gone forever. The thing that defined what it is to be Japanese and who you are as a Japanese is gone. The people you thought were the barbarians are here. And they are trying to dismantle your society and reconstruct you in their own image. You don't even know in a generation what it, what it will mean to be Japanese. And they're telling you that you brought this all on yourself because of all the evil things you did, and yet you know perfectly well they did all kinds of evil things too. Yeah, but you're invading these other countries. Hey, you know, we were imitating, explicitly imitating British imperialism. We're a small island nation. You know, we're either going to be a world power or be dominated by world powers. What are we going to do? We're going to do what the British did. We're going to acquire colonies abroad. And in fact, if you look at the documents of the time, that was explicitly the plan. We're going to imitate British imperialism because that was a very successful model as far as they were concerned. And we're going to acquire those colonies the same way the British did. We're going to send guns. 
Okay. Um, and here we are acting like we don't know anything about this. Oh, you can't do that. That's wrong. Why? Because it's threatening our national interests or our economic interests? The whole thing becomes a complete tangled mess where everybody's got dirty hands. So you're sitting there in Japan and you're like this, you're like this poor woodcutter. The good guys and the bad guys seem to be, you know, the bad guys seem to be good guys, the good guys seem to be bad guys. Everybody seems to be confused. Everybody seems to be capable of both good and evil. You can't just simply take a dualistic approach and say, here are the forces of good and here are the forces of evil. Uh-uh. It's human, the human existence is a mixed bag. So what do you do in this situation of chaos, in this situation where you can not be sure of too much? What you do is you step up to the plate and you say, we are still capable of caring about one another. We are still capable of compassion. We are still capable of humane action. And as long as we can still do that, there is still hope for the future and we can still go on another day.